Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery and here we are in the JE Advanced Solutions series and in this series we bring all the intriguing and slightly difficult problems of the previous year's JE Advanced papers uh, which I call it as the alpha and omega of your preparation which is the starting and ending part of your preparation. It's a must do question series in which uh, we will try to take up the ambiguities and if at all any difficulties of understanding the concept of these questions, we'll try to put it forward. And also at the end of this uh, problem, I'll be giving you the practice problems associated uh, to the similar scenarios of this question. Okay, so uh, this is from the 2019 paper one. It's question on gravitation, but it has some multiple concepts uh, which would be really interesting to look forward to. Okay, so let's see the formal wording of the question. So here it is, in case you've never given it a try, just pause the video here, read the question and give it a fair try of two to three minutes and do come back for the complete explanation of the concept behind it. What's the inspiration behind setting this particular problem? What is expected of the student uh, in an exam situation of this problem? And also we'll try to see at the end some practice problems on a similar scenarios. Okay, so here we go. Consider a spherical gaseous cloud of mass density rho of r in free space where r is the radial distance from its center. The gaseous cloud is made of particles of equal mass m moving in circular orbits about common center with same kinetic energy k. The force acting on the particles is their mutual gravitational force. If rho of r is constant with time, the particle number density n as a function of r is that mass density function divided by mass of each particle m. Is. So he's asking what's the value of that number density function in terms of given parameters. Capital G is the universal gravitational constant. Okay, so well, let's start with the concept that I'm going to use. There are mul multiple ways of solving this problem. So I'll try to keep it as close to the JE syllabus as possible. So the concept I'm going to look at is the analogous situation for the Gauss law for gravity. So we all are very familiar as JE aspirants to the electrostatics Gauss law, where we talk about a integration of electrostatic field over any closed surface, the flux of it, uh, or Gaussian surface is equal to the charge enclosed by epsilon naught, where this K represents one by four pi epsilon naught. So the exact analogous situation of this in gravitation could be that gravitational flux around a closed Gaussian surface should be equal to minus four pi G, G is the universal gravitation constant into total mass enclosed inside that Gaussian surface. So a simple example, if my green Gaussian surface here encloses M1, M2 and M3 and doesn't enclose M4, then the value of the gravitational flux that is this LHS should be simply minus four pi G into M1 plus M2 plus M3, okay? So that is what we are going to use in this particular problem. So if you go back to the problem statement, you realize that there are many particles, each of mass M going in circular orbits. Okay, so if you take each uh, circular orbit of a single particle and write the centrifugal force balance, you'll end up getting this as step one. So a lot of things on the board here. So just to follow my lead, we'll try to do it in a stepwise manner. So if imagine on the right side of the screen, we have this spherical glacius cloud represented by some red color in which at any distance r, if you take a small set of gaseous particles of mass dm or dm naught, I should call it. So on each of these gaseous particles, which are going in circular motion of radius r, there should be a centripetal force and a balanced centrifugal force if I sit on the reference frame of these gaseous particles. So the value of that centripetal force should be their mass multiplied by the field that they experience, gravitational field. And the centrifugal force would be in their frame dm naught into v square by r, where v is the speed with which they are going around in the circular orbit. So once you balance and mass cancellation takes place, the value of the field has to be a function of v square by r. 
since v is variable but the kinetic energy is fixed for each particle of small m mass remember in the head this dm not there could be some m mass particles of each mass m right so their kinetic energy was specified in the question as half mv square so i'll remove this v square and use this k as a constant to get to this particular idea okay so this 2k by mr ensures that the field is inversely proportional to distance r in this scenario now coming to the step 2 we'll try to calculate uh, the required value of number density function using gauss law so for gauss law i'll try to do it a bit differently okay so because of the need of the question so i'll take two gaussian surface one at a distance r the spherical gaussian surface and one at a distance r plus dr these two white colored things let me borrow it here Okay, so there will be a lot of those gaseous dm knots that would be there inside this in a shell of area or volume, I should say, 4 pi r square dr. Okay, now think, if I were to write the Gauss law twice, one for the outer surface and one for the inner surface, I would get two fluxes, right? One phi outer and one for phi inner. Imagine I am subtracting those two. Okay, so phi outer minus phi inner would have been given we me minus 4 pi g into the subtraction of the masses enclosed right outer one will enclose this entire spherical mass whereas the inner one will enclose the only what is there inside so when you subtract those two then you'll end up getting mass that is only there in this 4 pi r square dr shell okay so that's what i have written m shell so the value of the flux outer minus flux inner because this is a differential element can be written as the flux only due to this difference value of de okay so these field lines will enter whereas these field lines will exit this thing so only the difference or the flux that will be associated with the subtraction would be de into 4 pi r square okay so this left hand side i hope it's very clear and on the right hand side the manage uh, the manipulation that you will do is minus 4 pi g kept as it is mass inside that shell look at this carefully should be written as the number per unit volume into volume multiplied by mass of each particle inside that volume so this is pretty straightforward number per unit volume into volume multiplied by mass of many particles inside this particular uh, shell so the left hand side and right hand side carefully written down and strike out the common fact factors of 4 pi r square on both sides the value of n will be simply 1 by m this m brought here and this 1 by 4 pi g and de by dr okay right so the, this is going to and de by dr we already know is equivalent to uh, 2k by mr square that is what i'm going to substitute here that minus sign gets engulfed and you end up getting the required answer which is given in one of the options i think that uh, we can go back and check and this would be the option b here okay so i hope it's very clear so the important step here is to be able to write this d into 4 pi r square so it's slightly different from whatever gauss law that we used to apply in the uh, problems that we are more familiar with in JE syllabus. Uh, instead of taking one Gaussian surface, you take very two very uh, close Gaussian surfaces and do this. What is the gist of this? Okay, so let's try to see an alternative outlook. Some of the Olympiad aspirants would be knowing this. That's nothing but taking up the differential form of the Gauss law. Okay, so this is strictly for Olympiad aspirants. So the students who are actually not associated with olympiads so may ignore this particular step but there's now no harm in knowing extra things okay so the differential form of gauss law in gravitation could be written in this format del dot e is equal to minus 4 pi g uh, rho we we have uh, this lhs is uh, significantly similar to what we have done here the spirit of this calculation is completely completely uh, embedded inside the LHS here, okay? And if you try to use the spherical symmetry, you have to use spherical coordinate system, and uh, Olympiad aspirants would be um, very familiar with writing E as E subscript R, R cap, that is, it's a function of only radial distance and its direction is radial, let's say, then the value of the divergence is given by this form. Okay, right. So 1 by r square dou by dou r into r square into e is equal to minus 4 pi g nm. Okay, so the value of rho I've written as number per unit volume multiplied by the mass of each particle, which gives you the density. 
Okay, so if you substitute the value of this capital E from the step one here, the step one is unavoidable, only the further step two, you could have used the differential form of Gauss law. So as a future uh, situation, you need to also know if you're uh, aiming at Olympiads, then not to use the differential form of Gauss law. But the given problem, you can and safely use it, but there are some situations in which there, uh, the, you should be very careful before using it. Okay, so uh, you can comment below uh, if you know the answer and I will try to provide you with the answer in a Olympiad workout series later on by taking up a problem. Okay, so here are the practice problems for the this JE scenario, some spherical situations, spherical symmetries, you can borrow uh, situations from electrostatics also on similar kind. So here's the first one, try to comment the answer below. And here's the problem number two, any, any another spherical charge distribution. Okay, so here there's a misprint, I have corrected it, rho naught into E power minus R by A divided by R square is the charge density function, total charge is being asked. As an additional question, please do also answer for the value of the field as a function of R for radial distance R, okay, apart from this simplistic looking question. And third one is from the pathfinder, Okay, so yeah, this is also a spherical symmetry is there. This is slight, slightly different from whatever we encountered in the actual problem today, but uh, a spherical symmetry nevertheless, uh, it's worth a try and it's a nice JE candidate uh, in the, for the future situations. Okay, so please do go through these three and I'll provide you with the solutions of these three in three separate videos, okay? so. In case uh, you have liked this video, please do check out the rest of the other parallel series that are running. So links of all those parallel series are in the description below. Right? If you're familiar with this channel, you'll know what they mean. And uh, please do like this video and please do share it with your peers and also relevant WhatsApp and Telegram groups so that uh, there can be growth to my channel and enough motivation for me to come up with more videos uh, of all the series that I'm providing day in day out. Okay, so I'll try to be more frequent and uh, more consistent in my uploads. Uh, I've, I've been a bit busy nowadays. So thanks for your patience. Thanks for uh, waiting and uh, giving me the support that I, uh, uh, <clears throat> I'm very humble, uh, humbly, hum I, I, I think I want to thank you from bottom of my heart for all the support you have given till, till now. So uh, thanks for staying this long and see you in the next video.